My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer. I'll be able to make friends, try to make a little money. My job is not just to entertain, but to educate and teach you. So call me at 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. I'm steamed. I'm sick and tired of hearing about how we've got a narrow market, a market with only a handful of winners driving the performance, nearly all of which are in tech. The implication being that a narrow market is a precarious market, so you better sell, 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 sell. before no, no. I've had enough. Yeah, okay. It's a given. We had a narrow market. The SP 500 is led by the Magnificent Seven that seemingly exists to save the other 493 villagers in the index from Eli Wallach and his host of bandits. But you know what? Magnificent Seven, the real deal. Seven brilliantly run companies with amazing sales and earnings. Great balance sheets. So what if they lead the way? I mean, a win's a win. And we won again today. Dow gaining 153 points. SP climbing 0.99%. Tech heavy Nasdaq jumping 1.28%. Not every company could be a Hall of Famer, let alone an all-pro. The Magnificent Seven's all-pro. What are we supposed to do? Challenge all seven gunfighters? Sell, 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 sell. Somehow blast them in Kingdom Cup? Bad idea. They deal in lead, and you don't want to be their competitor. So who are the Magnificent Seven? Well, I mean, no, it's not Yule Brenner this time yet. Well, here we go. I have never a list of them. You had Apple with a total return of nearly 37% through the first five months of the year. Mr. Softy has returned 38%. And NVIDIA with a return of 159%. Amazon with the return of 44%. How about this one? Meta up 120%. Tesla's up 66%. And Alphabet up 39%. Now, I know I have the right to say this, that right now I've had enough of them because I talk about them every night. Now, people, like, uh, people act like this strength for these companies is a bad thing. What do you want these CEOs to do? Play, play blindfold in one hand, tie by the back? Maybe you give the other guys points to compete with them? I mean, does it matter that Apple is the highest customer satisfaction in the world? Shouldn't Microsoft be rewarded for doing fabulously during this tech slowdown and then made the biggest bet on AI of any company, a $10 billion investment in the company behind ChatGPT? NVIDIA makes gold in the form of graphics cards that are essential for AI. Literally can't get enough of them. They issued guidance for the current quarter that was nearly $4 billion above expectations, for heaven's sake. How about Tesla? Question here, Europe, China? Best-in-class products, really inexpensive prices. Amazon is coming out of a trough year, so business will accelerate because of AI, and sales will do well as brick-and-mortar shrinks from shrink. More on that later. Meta's Mark Zuckerberg, he's going all in AI in a year of living efficiently. Alphabet, looking late to AI, right? Well, actually, it turned out to have a lot more going on than even their own executives seem to know. All terrific long-term opportunities. But you know what? Just like in the movie The Magnificent Seven, the gunfighters saved the village. And you know what the villagers did? <laughs> Nothing. So rather than complain about how the market's so narrow and everything's terrible, take away the belt and chew laces, I want to approach things differently. Kind of like Steve McQueen talking to Yul Brenner about how the villagers didn't pull their weight. If that went over your head, just go watch the movie, the original. Now, let me give you the list of the, yeah, the new one was awful. Let me give you a list of companies that I'm simply not willing to wait for before I start pulling the trigger on the Magnificent Seven. In other words, these companies should not keep you out of the Magnificent Seven at all. I'm going to go over the biggest losers for the first five months in the year of, of the, in the once mighty Dow, which is down oh so slightly for the year. Even when you include dividends, the Dow you know, has only had a pathetic five positive days in May, three of them in one week. Are we really supposed to view the Magnificent Seven as a source of danger? When the real threat is right in front of us in the form of the dirty dozen of the Dow? Forget the leaders. Let's talk about the players that can't even make the team. Might not even go out for it. We're going to start with the ones that are least down. A little better. Procter & Gamble off 6% through the end of May, which I'm naming Charles Bronson because he was the only man to play in both movies. Procter was having a very strong five months until a few weeks ago when analysts started complaining about peaking margins and slowing sales. I say, give me a break. Procter's going to lower, lower costs without lower prices. It's called a great combo. Next, Coca-Cola, also off 6%. And this one's strictly because people think the Fed's almost done tightening, so why bother with safety? 
They don't care that it had a good quarter. Out of fashion. Should that be a reason to stay away from buying NVIDIA? Does that make any sense at all? Not this. Coca-Cola. Then there's United Health. It's down 8% because who wants to own the health insurers during an election year? doesn't matter that it's a great company that's going to crush the numbers. You don't buy this a year before an election. IBM is down 8%, and all I can say is give me high growth or get me out. You want no growth and actual risk. Well, how about the absolutely miserable performance of lowly villager Verizon? I can't find anything good to say about it except my really cool Verizon red windbreaker that they gave me that is perfect for raining day gardening. I mean, it's ideal. Travelers, well, it's pretty good. But Dream One, if you like, if you think a cyclical stock like this one can rise to greatness at this point in the business cycle, down 9.7 percent. You always hear it that a family's only as happy as the unhappiest kid. Nike has markets that are like families, and the Chinese families make it a whole joint sag of 10 percent. Home Depot, Fed wants to raise rates. Housing's caught in the crosshairs. Lots of stealing too. Home Depot used to be magnificent. Could be again when the rate hikes are over. Down 10.3 percent. I mean, here's one that Trust owns, and it makes no sense to me that it's down 10.6%. I'm talking Honeywell. Maybe we're all waiting for the CEO in waiting, Vimal Kapoor, who became actual CEO today. Maybe we'll give us some direction. j and is down 12%. It's caught up in litigation where it's trying to give $8.9 billion to a huge pool of talc litigants who blame J&J for allegedly selling them a product that gave them cancer. I am a huge fan of J&J here. I have been since 1985. But... Unlike back then, you're totally hostage to the climax of this lawsuit. Caterpillar told a terrific story today at an industry conference, but I get the sense that nobody wants to buy an earth mover going into a global recession. Even his CEO, Jim Humblebee, has dramatically de his business. We like it. We own it for the trust. We want to be bigger. As the buyback is strong, and I suspect a higher dividend coming. It's down 14%. Seems wrong to me. Getting ready to buy. Amgen's trying to buy its way out of a hole in earnings with its $27 billion acquisition of Verizon Therapeutics. FTC doesn't want it to happen. Stock stalled down 16%. Chevron's also down 16% because oil, oil's terrible, and it might not even go higher after this weekend's OPEC plus meeting. The, pro, the cartel is feeling real broken. Walgreens, down 18%. It's a books up on health care, but doesn't give you the real skin on how much of the merchandise is now behind lock and key because of pilferage. I don't know what I do with this place. Amazon's our nemesis, and when same-day delivery's everywhere, it might be faster to order online than to wait for the clerk to come and unlock the Gillette Razor Box. <laughs> Finally, there's the dividend aristocrat known as 3M. All I can say about 3M is that it's involved with some litigation with some of the most sympathetic pl- uh, plaintiffs in the world. Drinkers of polluted groundwater, possibly leached by 3M, and veterans who claim that they have hearing issues thanks to 3M's allegedly defective earplugs. Wow. That's the kind of litigation that sends a once great stock down 22% in the first five months of the year. Bottom line, do you want to own the petrified villagers in the Dow? Or would you rather stick with what's winning, the magnificent seven? Remember, you don't want to wait for the villagers to turn things around, but you bet on the actual gunfighters if you want to make big money. Hey, let's go to Mickey in Michigan. Mickey. Oh, it's Mickey in Massachusetts. My terrible bad. How's it going? <laughs> Very good. How are you, Jim? I'm doing well. Thank you. So I'm calling about CVS. Uh, I bought it uh, about the time COVID started, and I had about $10,000 invested in March of 2022, and now it's down to 7000 Should I buy, sell, or hold? Um, it yields three and a half. It does have the problems of many retailers, which is shrinkage. Uh, it just did a very big bond offering, and I think it's moving really aggressively into health care. I would not sell this stock at 3.5% yield. I would buy it. Let's go to Jay in Wisconsin. Jay. Jim, I was wondering if you have an opinion on activist investors, uh, Legion Partners involvement with Twilio and suggesting that they about Twilio? Um, okay, look, I, Jeff Lawson's made a couple of reductions in force. He's doing a buyback. He's more focused. I think a lot of his problems have to do with small, medium-sized businesses that may not be as, they may be a little more reluctant to order. I would not sell Twilio here. I think if it pulls back to 60, I'd be a buyer. Sebastian in California. Sebastian. Yes, Mr. Kramer. Thank you so much for all you do. Good My afternoon pleasure. to you, sir. 
So uh, my question it has two parts. Disney, it says one of its lowest costs for stock. What is your assessment of Disney stock? And also, is this a good time to purchase it? Or do you okay. recommend any other stock under no, the No, I thing? think Disney's an excellent stock to buy. My travel trust owes it. It's been very disappointing. We are down a lot on Disney. I talk about being up on NVIDIA. Got to say what I'm down on. Disney's one of the stocks we're battling. I talked about that at our last uh, club call meeting. But if these prices are 89 if you're willing to wait a year, I think we'll look back and say, how the heck did you get that at $89? All right. You can try and wait for the rest of the market to catch up to the Magnificent Seven. But why do that when you just buy with the winners if they're still doing well? I'm Evan Knight tonight. My hunt for buying opportunities continues. CrowdStrike tumbled after earnings, but I'm looking at the big picture with the CEO, finding out if the recent decline could present an attractive buying opportunity. Then, in a tough moment for retail, I'm focused on a disturbing new trend in the space that could impact the sector's profit potential and reveal the names that can come out the other side. And the AI hype has taken the market by storm. But I'll tell you why you shouldn't believe everything you hear when I turn in tonight's homework. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.